Hello, I am Dr. Dao Xinli, Department Chair for the Doctorate Degree Program at Yosan University of Traditional Chinese Medicine. And I'm James Skoyan, Senior Faculty for the Doctorate Degree Program at Yosan University. Please join us as we explore Chinese medicinal herbs and their clinical applications. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Herbcast. And with me, I have Professor James Scoyne. Hi, Jim. Hi, Dal. Good to talk with you again. Very good to speak with you. And today, we are going to be spending some time with four very important herbs. And these are Ma Fang, Gui Zi, uh, Qiang Huo, and Zi Su Ye. So let's uh, jump right in because uh, these are wonderful um uh, wind cold dispersing herbs and use commonly for wind cold conditions. And uh, let's first uh, go through uh, Herba Ephedra. Uh, Herba Ephedra, obviously, just like all the other three herbs, it's in the um, Biao um, exterior relieving herb in the wind cold elimination category. And uh, in China, there are 11 different types of ma fang that's been used. There is zhong ma fang, there is mu zhe ma fang, and there is cao ma fang, and there are many different ma fang, and it's been domesticated or agriculturally planted in a very large area in China. The quality is good, and uh, and Basically, uh, this is uh, the most common use, uh, have to be uh, mu zhe ma huang. And um, let's move forward to talk a little bit about the characteristics uh, of uh, this herb. Yeah, ma huang is an herb which is pungent in taste and bitter. It's a warm temperature herb and opens into the lung and bladder channels. It's dosed, uh, in general, uh, between 1.5 and 9 grams, but it can be dosed higher by edema, 9 to 15 grams. And on occasion, it's dosed quite high, up to 20 to 25 grams, but at that dosage, it has to be used with caution. Well, I know that uh, there are some people who like to use ma huang raw, and there's some people like use ma huang to be baked with honey. In those two situations, Jim, do you think that we might change the dosages of uh, these two particular um, kinds? Yes. Uh, in general, the dose with the raw herb, which has a strong diaphoretic action, should not be very high, again, with the exception of using it for edema. And I think you mentioned right there, I think um, we now know that ma huang is mainly used uh, really of three different actions. And obviously, when you consult with a lot of different textbooks, there'll be some minute and minor actions, and there's quite, uh, could be quite many of them. But I'm going to focus on three of them. The very first one is that it has a diaphoretic function or sweating function. And that sweating function helps to relieve Biao syndromes. And the second action is that it does have lung dispersing and as well as asthma calming or elimination uh, action. And the third action is that it benefits the water. Another word, another word to put that is diuretic, and it helps to reduce swelling. These are three uh, main different uh, actions that we have. So, Jim, what are some of the indications which you use it for? Well, it's used as a main herb in formulas to dispel the wind cold and treat symptoms like general body aches, uh, muscle aches and pains with an acute condition, fever and a strong shivering sensation or an aversion to cold. It's also particularly used when there's a no sweating as part of a wind cold pattern. But it also is used for lung-specific symptoms like a cough, a relatively acute, strong, productive cough with thin white mucus. 
It's also used, as you mentioned, for affecting the lung's ability to control respiration. So it's used for dyspnea or difficulty in breathing or shortness of breath and asthma, a main herb for asthma. And then the last indication related to its function in affecting lungs' water passages is to treat edema, especially facial edema and edema of the upper extremities. And I think just to supplement a little bit, it's always, it uh, also has been used for Wincol B syndrome, uh, Wincol B syndrome in some of uh, uh, the patients. And as a combination goes, Ma Huang tends to combine with Guizi, which is the next herb we're going to be talking about. When you combine these two herbs, since Guizi can penetrate to the yin portion of the blood, it actually helps to smooth and allow the, the smooth flow of the yin, uh, yin portion for nourishment. So it's um, when you have both combined, it does do well in both diaphoretic and bell relieving actions. And the second combination is Ma Huang with Xin Nen. Ma Huang with Xin Nen, when combined together, really helps even more in dispersing the lung, stop cough and asthma. And sometimes also Ma Huang can combine with Gui Zi and Bai Zhu, attracted lotus, um, to not only help to uh, diaphoresis and relieve bell, it also dissipates coal and dam, dissipates coal and dam. And the last one is you can combine with gypsum, which uh, uh, it's a pungent and cool and dispersing, so it can be used to clear lung and stop asthma. So, Jim, uh, what are some of the precautions that we need to have using this herb? Well, the first point is it's an herb that's especially useful for exterior cold excess patterns. So using it by uh, exterior heat pattern would not be a good idea, especially, of course, by that pattern involves when that pattern involves sweating. It's also not particularly appropriate in a deficiency pattern in general, even if it's an asthma condition or a condition with cough, which are some of its indications, it's not particularly indicated when there's a deficiency related to those symptoms. And liver yang rising, as well as uh, conditions with hypertension, sh should be mentioned here, as this, or this medicinal may affect hypertension negatively uh, and uh, aggravate uh, those conditions of liver yang rising as well. Yeah, I would add on to it. It's also um, with the liver yang rising, also hard fire situation of insomnia. I think when someone has an insomnia, taking Ma Huang, especially at nighttime, I think uh, uh, it might be a little bit stimulating uh, to do so at night. Um, so in the classics, there is an uh, uh, incredible amount of uh, documentation on this herb. We can always start with Sen Nong Ben Cao Jing. We talk about that Ma Huang is uh, mainly used for wind stroke, uh, used for sun han, uh, headache, uh, used for basically wind disease malaria, and it helps to relieve the bell sweats, gets rid of heat and pathogens, help to stop uh, uh, nausea as well as asthma, uh, as well as cough gets rid of cold and heat, and breaks up zhen jia and any kind of tumor. So that's what he talked about in the Sen Nong Ben Cao Jing. And Ming Yi Bie Lu add on to it, talk about how this herb is wonderful in relieving cou li or fascia tissues as well as muscles. Ben Cao Gang Mu talk about how Ma Huang is the lung's main herb and use a lot of in pulmonary and lung issues, lung issues. And we see in Zhang Zhongjin's book of Sang Han Ren, where you talk about when you don't have sweating, then you use Ma Huang. And when you have sweating, you use Gui Zi. So these are just some of the classics that I would like to share with you. And as in pharmacology, um, basically Ma Huang has evaporative oil that can stimulate uh, sweating. And we have seen in certain high temperature uh, in people uh, with Ma Huang, utilized of Ma Huang can actually increase secretion of the sweat glands. Uh, it also stimulate 
um, uh, the heart function and the uh, obvious uh, uh, diuretic, diaphoretic uh, uh, um, functions. Um, and uh, Ma Huang also being used to stimulate the heart, contracts the blood vessel, raises the blood pressure. So I think people who has excitability, insomnia, as well as hypotension is something you really want to use um, uh, with care. Uh, so um, this is basically what I can find in uh, classics as well as in pharmacology. Jim, do you have anything else to add about this herb? Well, just to underline it, it's a main herb for, again, lung function for exterior conditions involving wind and cold. Just repeating those two key points for the listeners to understand. Otherwise, there are numerous additional actions, and we'll leave those for the moment and go on to the next herb. And that uh, Gui Zi is our next herb. It's another wonderful herb and used quite extensively, just like Ma Huang used for wind cold conditions. Gui Zi Remulus Cinnamomi, it's basically um, produced and created, uh, domesticated in Guanxi, Guangdong, and Yunnan, Fujian provinces, especially the mostly seen in Guanxi. Province and is basically harvested in the spring and summer. It's usually dried up or uh, baked dry and cut into slices uh, to be used. And uh, so, Jim, what are some of the characteristics of this uh, uh, herb? Well, first of all, it's pungent and it's also sweet. So it has two tastes associated with it. It's also a warm herb. And it's dosed in general between 3 and 10 or 3 and 12 grams. It opens into the lung channel, the heart channel, and the bladder channel. Wonderful. And as for action goes, there are three main actions, kind of similar to Ma Huang, but different in the sense that Ma Huang is much more lung-oriented, while Gui Zi is much more systemically oriented. It goes into channels and collaterals, and it can go to the way portion, it can go into the in portion. It's a very versatile herb. You can use it as a carrier to bring other herb effect to a particular location that you want to treat. So the very first action is that it disperses wind cold. And the second action is that it warms up the channels, and it dissipate cold. And sometimes some people say that channel, that word channel in Chinese is the same thing as menstruation. So it's not just warming up channel, it's also used to warming up menstruation. Another way to say it is that it actually is used for menstrual um, hormone-related body aches, that kind of stuff, as well as uh, um, uh, dysmenorrhea issues, which Jim will talk a little bit about. And uh, the third action is that it can raise, it can open up yang qi and help the bladder's hua qi function, which helps the bladder in its uresis, uh, diuresis function and uh, help promote um, basically urination. And uh, so let's um, move on to indications. Well, I, I can, this is an herb which complements Ma Huang in a condition of exterior cold excess. It treats also symptoms like body aches, uh, aches around the joints or muscle aches as well, as well as the general pattern where there's no sweating. Yet this is also an herb which can be a main herb in the form for an exterior cold deficiency pattern condition where there's uh, sweating going on with cold present on the surface of the body. In fact, it's a main herb for that type of condition. So an herb for the exterior. It's also an herb uh, for, as you mentioned, menstrual complaints uh, involving mm -hmm. stagnations especially or cold in uh, the lower part of the body. And um, that's uh, one of the indications of an herb uh, like Wager when it's combined with other blood-moving herbs, especially treating also dysmenorrhea as well as uh, amenorrhea with cold as well especially with cold. Now, I want to back up and mention its action with the bladder. It's uh, combined with diuretics and classical formulas for uh, urinary retention and uh, uh, dysuria and edema. It's also an herb, an important one for the heart. In fact, it can be used as a main herb in a formula for improving heart function and treating palpitations and an irregular pulse. 
And、uh, looking at the Earth combination,、uh, you were talking about the wind cold situation, relieving the tissues and the muscles, and for common cold, wind cold, Bell syndrome.、Uh, a lot of times, you can combine with mahuang, for example, and that help to strengthen the sweating effect. Sweating effect. And if you're looking at the warming of the channels and dissipate cold,、uh, we're talking about frequently combined with fang feng or wei lin xian、uh, or other herbs such as dang gui,、uh, chuan xiong, such as in wen jin tang, and、uh, as well as you can、uh, for heart deficiency and palpitation. And when you have irregular heartbeat, we can、um, add on、uh, baked licorice as well as codanopsis、uh, dangsen <clears throat> and ajiao. So these are combined together, such as hu mai san, hu mai tang, used to what we call return the pulse. And for bladder, I think Jimmy already talked about. I would、uh, suggest we add wu lin san into the mix. Things like fu lin, zhu lin, zhe xie, that kind of herb,、uh, to create the five mushroom type of、uh, fungus or mushroom type of uh, uh, herbal formulation that kind of helps. To relieve、uh, a lot of、uh, edemas and、uh, water retentions.、Um, so, Jim, is there any caution that we need to have with this herb when we use it? Well, one would be it should be used with caution or with other herbs to balance its action when there's a. Uh, a heat condition, for example, a heat condition on the surface of the body, because it、uh, induces heat, so to speak, or it has a warming nature. So it would, should be used with caution when there's an external heat excess, or even if there's a yin deficiency condition as well.、Uh, it could also be one which、uh, should be used with caution if there's、uh, excess bleeding involved in a condition of、uh, stagnation with heat. And one other would be to use with caution during pregnancy. Yeah, I think the excessive bleeding sometimes can make it worse, and the bleeding sometimes I, I, I think sometimes it can actually interfere. But a lot of times you have to probably take a lot or combine other herbs that might be too strong and that can create problem. So if we look at classics. There's definitely just like Ma Huang, no shortages of documentation and explorations. For example, Senong Ben Cao Qing talk about that Guizi. It's really、uh, used to descend qi, descends reversal of lung qi、uh, with cough and asthma, and any kind of nodding of qi, any kind of、uh, sore throat,、uh, any kind of excessive、uh, vomiting or clear fluid, and benefit、uh, arthritis as well. And Zhen Zhu Lang talk about how this、uh, guizi can be used for sang hong, sang feng, and、uh, headache, and opens up the fascia. Help to relieve bell and promote sweating and get rid of a skin eczema kind of situation.、Um, so and、uh, Ben Jin Su Zhen talk about how this herb is can be used to benefit arthritis, benefit joints, warms up the channel, opens up the、uh, meridian and passageways, and it even talk about there are six simple understanding of Gui Zi. One, it harmonizes the Yin. Second, it opens up the Yang. Third, it benefits the water. Fourth, it purges the qi downward. Five, it gets rid of stagnancy. Six, it tonifies the middle. These are the six <clears throat> major sim- major、uh, discussion about what guizi can do. Guizi can do. So that's the classics. And in pharmacology,、um, guizi、uh, basically has many different components. And what we have found, and even in today's world. We have found that、uh, it's used to strengthen the heart, stop the pain, strengthen the stomach digestion, gets rid of wind,、um, and you know, in modern day usage, we've been using guizi to control blood sugar. So, in some cases where I think there is more of a wind cold cold type of condition, I think in that situation will probably work better. Work better.、Uh, so that's、uh, research. And、uh, pharmacology here. So, Jim, do you have anything else to add before we move forward? No, I think you explained very well, and your references to the classics can be helpful in understanding this herb. 
Uh, once again, perhaps there are a number of other actions here which uh, the listeners can um, uh, be aware of in time as well. Wonderful. Then let's go on to Qianghuo, uh, note of terror gem uh, in system. Uh, Qianghuo is basically still, we are still in the wind coal elimination uh, area here. And uh, this Qianghuo is uh, originated and produced uh, uh, broadly in Sichuan province, in Gansu province, in Qinghai, Shanxi, Yunnan, so quite a bit of places that you will see Qianghuo grown. Uh, basically, um, uh, it's uh, um, insects and bugs really like this herb. So what you wanted to do is clean this up, wash it clean, and uh, bake it dry in low temperature, and maybe even process it and put it in a dry container. If you don't put it in a dry container, you're going to get some parasite, parasite very, very quickly. So let's go to the characteristics. Uh, Jim, maybe enlighten us on um, this herb and how this herbs uh, might be different than the previous two. Well, from the taste, it's also pungent as many of all as all of the herbs in this wind cold exterior relieving category are. But it's also bitter. We just saw that uh, cinnamon is sweet, and uh, this herb is bitter. As Ma Wang is also bitter. So it's also from temperature warm in in this. Uh, um, in ter- it's warm, and it, it opens up to the kidney and bladder channels. Its dosage is relatively low. Generally, I keep it around 3 to 6 grams. But there are a few rare cases where it can be dosed quite high if other herbs in the formula are used to balance that dosage or a main action is emphasized. Great. And as action goes, again, Guizi, like the previous, I mean, Qianghuo, like previous ones, have three main actions. The very first one, it dissipates when cold. Um, and then the second one is dissipates wind damp and stop bee syndrome. Um, and then uh, the next one is that it is very good in stopping pain. It has a certain amount of uh, pain management uh, action and function. So, Jim, how would you use uh, this herb? Well, in a wind cold condition with general symptoms and signs like body aches and posterior neck pain and occipital headaches in a classic wind cold pattern where the Taiyang channels are affected. Taiyang channel means bladder channel in this case. I would use it for that. In the case of wind and damp, uh, uh, reiterating neck pain, for example, when the back of the head is affected, the posterior neck aspect, and even upper back pain. It also is used as a guide herb uh, in a formula with wind damp to direct it to the upper extremity, direct the formula action to the upper extremity, and, and therefore it's used for pain in the shoulder on occasion or pain of the upper extremities. And uh, in terms of its action on uh, pain, uh, I just mentioned the neck pain, shoulder pain. It's often used for the general symptom of pain with other herbs, uh, directing to the surface, and especially towards the upper body. So that's wonderful. And then, uh, of course, there's a contrast to more du huo, which is for more lower part of the body, which we'll discuss that herb much, much uh, later. Uh, for wind cold uh, headache, qiang huo is actually a very good herb. And, uh, and with a body ache, it frequently combined with uh, fang feng, silaris, and bai zi and cang zu uh, together, such as in the herb formula, jing huang bai du san, has some of these main herbs in there. So this is uh, basically uh, the um, um, herb uh, combinations. And so Jim, uh, how, how would you, uh, is there something we need to be concerned when we are using this herb? Well, there's two uh, indications I think of, and one is to be cautious when there's a deficiency, especially a blood deficiency when using this herb. It is is pungent and warm and has some drying properties related to it. It's also an herb that shouldn't be used in a large dose if there's a spleen and stomach deficiency as it may cause or induce vomiting. That's great, and I would also want to say somebody, people who has profuse sweating, 
and with a deficiency condition, they may want to use, they may not want to use this herb because this got a little kick to it. It's a pretty strong herb. Now, uh, if we are looking at classic rice, again, just like the previous two herbs of Mahuang and Guizhi, there is a, not a lack of classic description of this formula. And let's go through it. <clears throat> so the very first one is Ben Cao Gangmu, where it talk about how Qiang Huo and Du Fu both are very good in get rid of wind damp and benefit the joints, benefit the joints. And then uh, Yao Xin Run, Talk about how this herb Qianghuo can be used for the- thievery wind, where that uh, someone is aphasic or lost voice or could not speak well, and or if there is many different uh, blood tumor or how we call xue jie in the abdomen, uh, it's also used for paralysis, facial paralysis, and uh, uh, B syndrome throughout the whole body. So it's uh, basically a, a wonderful discussion in some of these uh, uh, classics. So, and the pharmacology is that Changpo contains evaporative oil and amino acid and alkaloids. And some of these uh, Changpo, uh, for some of these, uh, for example, these uh, germs or bacteria, it actually suppresses and actually kills their action and function. So, um, very, uh, very good herb. Uh, any thought on this? I think we've covered this well, often used in pain patterns, perhaps to underline that, and uh, that goes together with the approach using it not only in wind cold, but also a bee pattern condition with wind damp and cold, or wind cold damp. Okay, wonderful, wonderful. Um, and uh, that's, uh, shall we move on to, I think, oh, another thing I want to talk about is that um, in the pharmacology, Changfu actually has been uh, used for inflammation, stopping pain, relief, uh, fever, and it also has been used for uh basically uh, blood flow deficiency going to the heart uh, where it can actually strengthen the blood flow. So this is some of the pharmacology I can find. Do you have anything else to add, Jim? No, uh, not at this time. Let's go on to the next one. Okay, uh, let's go to Zi Su Ye. Uh, Zi Su Ye, just like the previous uh, three herbs, but now we are really, besides this, in the category of uh, Wind coal elimination, it now uh, has other function. The other herbs are uh, kind of different than this one. Uh, first of all, um, the uh, the uh, zisuye, it's a beautiful herb. Uh, the leaf is quite purplish, and uh, I really enjoy really looking at and playing with this herb. I myself has, uh, I love this herb. It's very easy to cook. It actually tastes not bad and uh, has been used for stomach flu, stomach issues. And and uh, there are different parts of this plant, perella, uh, we call the folium perella that we can use. Right now we're going to be talking about the leaf, but the sukan, the branch, as well as the suzi, the seed, all of them has uh, definitely unique and different functions uh, from the uh, uh, the main, main herb, the leaf. So, uh, um, but we'll go ahead and focus on the main leaf. So the uh, let's look into the characteristic of these uh, for this herb, uh, Zi Su Ye. Yeah, so it's pungent and warm, and opens up into the lung channel, the spleen, and the stomach channel. All three channels of the Tai Yin and the Yang Ming here, lung, spleen, stomach. It's dosed generally between three and nine grams, uh, and uh, although uh, it can be dosed much higher uh, by specifically fish and crab poisoning, not particularly a everyday application in an herbal clinic, but one that will, should be noted here. In that case, it's dosed as high as 30 to 60 grams as well. Yeah, and I think for relieving like alcohol poisoning or uh, relieving drunkenness, I think a large dosage uh, could be even more helpful. So as an indication goes, this herb uh, relief belt dissipates cold 
and it circulates qi harmonized stomach. So it's been used for wind, cold, um, uh, wind, wind, cold, uh, colds, um, and is uh, is been used uh, also for uh, different uh, conditions that the Jim will talk about. The second thing is that it uh, also gets rid of any. Uh, I think we, what what I say earlier is that it can be used to circulate qi and harmonize the stomach. But not only that, it just it's good for qi circulation. It's good for any kind of chest congestion. So it's not just for spleen and stomach. And as you can tell, there's many different incident uh, situations where that the spleen and stomach. Qi congestion uh, is can be prevalent. So, Jim, how would you use this herb? Well, the first indication would be the common cold, wind cold type of pattern again that we mentioned with Ma Huang, Gui Chi, and Qiang Ho, the first three herbs in this category. Uh, if there was one symptom I, I tend to focus on with this herb, it would be in the wind cold pattern with a cough. So I want to mention the cough, and that would be with a clear white or yellow or clear discharge or whitish discharge, suggesting the cold. Uh, as you mentioned, it's a qi regulating herb, and it's used for uh, stomach uh, uh, qi stagnation with nausea, especially and uh, vomiting. And it's combined with other herbs that help that function improve the stomach function, namely. But it's also, as you mentioned, a good herb for moving the qi in other cases. In fact, it's used in an uh, application for qi stagnation that essentially leads to a, a phlegm, fluid and phlegm blockage in the throat, leading to a symptom like globus hystericus or a feeling of something stuck in the throat, as well as perhaps some distension and blockage sensation in the chest. That's great, Jim. And then um, basically when you use the tree coal, uh, frequently, we combine with Xinnan and Qianfu, especially when there's a cough situation, uh, such as in Xin Su San. <clears throat> and then if you have qi stasis in the chest, as well as in the mid gastrin, we usually would combine with Xianghu and Chen Pi, uh, such as Lu Su San. Mm-hmm. And, it, uh, uh, and, and we, we, if we are treating for uh, just spleen and stomach qi stasis, and if we are looking at quite a bit of heat symptoms, but maybe we can combine with uh, Huanian Coptitis uh, to help to treat this uh, congestion of a spleen and stomach qi. Uh, we can also combine with Ban Xia and Hopu and use for qi stasis and when there's phlegm involvement. And as for nausea and vomiting due to pregnancy, we frequently combine with Chen Pi and Salen, which is very good in stopping nausea and cough, but it also calms the fetus, calms the fetus. And now the least, uh, Jim was discussing about the poisoning, um, or shall we say allergic reaction from eating crabs, for example, fish, uh, causing abdominal pain and vomiting. We can, in that situation, combine with ginger, and bites uh, into the mix to help in that situation. Um, so this is some of the combination that we can use. Um, and uh, Jim, is there any kind of caution we need to uh, talk about uh, for this herb when we use this herb? I would like to mention two. One is for the pattern of exterior deficiency where there is some sweating uh, due to an exogenous factor on the surface of the body. And the second would be uh, to be aware that a long-term use of this herb may lead to some depletion of qi or may lead to symptoms of qi deficiency. So it's, generally speaking, relatively safe to use this for shorter periods of time. But over a long period of time, especially when there's no longer pathogen just on the surface of the body, it should be restricted in its application. And very good. And uh, in the classics, again, there's not a shortage of explanation. Um, and I think one of the main description about this herb came from this very uh, famous physician named Tao Hongjin, where he described very clearly what this uh, Zi Su Ye is all about. In fact, to a point, I almost think that he really loved this uh, herb tremendously. Um, but let's talk about some of the 
classics where it discuss about this earth, such as Bie Lu, where it talk about how this earth can descend qi, gets rid of coldness in the middle jiao, and Ben Cao Tu Jing, talk about how this earth can opens up the heart channel and benefit and spleen and stomach. And Ben Cao Gan Mu talk about this herb is used to circulate qi, opens up the middle, uh, dissolve phlegm, benefit the lung, harmonize the bleed of the blood, warms up the middle, middle, stop the pain, and it's good for stopping asthma. And also, not at least, good for calming the fetus, calming the fetus. So, quite a bit of discussion, uh, but a lot of them um, all discuss it's effectiveness not just as a diaphoresis herb, but also what it does to the middle jowl. It's such a soothing herb in such a, shall we say, a not very, a very, very uh, non-toxic herb. That's why it's so safe to be used uh, during uh, pregnancy, during pregnancy. And in pharmacology, um, this herb basically has an uh, antipyretic effect. It stops uh, fever. Also calms and have antibacterial effect. And it also uh, help to basically, as I say, using nausea in a pregnant woman. It also facilitate peristalsis of the intestines in the rat model. And so this is just some of the things I can find in pharma, uh, pharmacology. Uh, Jim, do you have anything uh, else to add? No, I think you've added quite a lot of information here. I appreciate that. Well, I think uh, we have spent some time with these uh, four herbs, and they're all very interesting herbs. I think our time's up. Otherwise, uh, let's come back and do this again next time. Thank you, Dr. Gao. Thank you for joining us in our discussion of these Chinese medicinal herbs, and we look forward to visiting with you again in our next episode. In the meantime, we wish you wellness and health. 